All right, it's been a while since I wanted to record this video. These videos aren't coming as uh, frequently as I want them to, but there you go. My interest with programming is more and more. So I wanted to talk about the first thing that interests me. Well, there's a lot that interests me, but this one is the dynamic double progression model. If I look it up. Dynamic double progression model for hypertrophy because I'm only consider, um, interested in that. I'm not interested in strength training, although you get stronger as you get bigger uh, sometimes <laughs> if you focus on it. To get bigger, you have to get a little bit stronger. I'm going with that. Um, so it says here, dynamic double progression. This is Google with the taken from Chris Adams personal training whatever that is. Um, with dynamic double progression, you'll use your performance on the previous set to decide what weight to use for the next set. If you get the top of the rep range on the first set, you'll increase the weight next session, but keep the weight the same for your next set. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I've been doing that, well, more and more over the past few years, but that's kind of what we learned in school. You know, uh, you keep you have a certain rep range and you get to it and then you bring the weight up a little bit and then you back down because you're not as strong but, and then you progress back up. So I guess the double progression is that the weight progresses and the, and the reps progress and you choose reps over weight, which is fine by me because I, like I said, I'm not into strength. I'm not into hurting myself and I don't like those numbers and I'm not a real strong person to begin with. So there you go. I was looking online for videos. All right, there's a video here. Let's see. So I already uh, screen recorded his, uh, his intro, what a dynamic double progression is. So it is right there or is it there? Let's just say that. A double progression is going to be appropriate for those who have outgrown linear progressions, but don't really want to commit to a percentage-based competitive program. If you're not quite ready to specialize, or maybe you just like training for hours on end and doing every machine in the gym, but you need a little bit of structure, this might be right up your alley. So in contrast to a linear progression where we just move forward on one front by increasing the amount of weight that we're doing each session, a double progression moves forward on two fronts, we are chasing reps first. So you stay at whatever weight you've selected until you've demonstrated that you can get all of your sets at the upper limit of whatever range you chose. And then once you've done that, we add weight. So we're chasing reps first, then adding weight once we've reached that goal. That's the one, two of the double progression. So if you saw the previous video, I'm trying to get across that I use a moleskin extra large journal as a bullet journal. I kind of do bullet journaling, but it's basically, it's, it's really scattered, but the, what I do is I have a table of contents. I know I keep track of the pages and I use the bullet journal like the way Ryder Carroll, Ryder Carroll initially brought it to us after the, before or after or during its evolution. It's to take the time to reflect, to write down. I keep this with me. I'm very introspective about it. I don't put anything into an app. I do have my iPhone notes now because I used to have things. I used to log this as a general overview. And then each time I come, I would see what I was, what I needed to, to equal or to beat. And then I would write it down with notes and stuff. But now I just take the overview and I put it in iPhone notes. See the last video for how I do that. It's very simple. So I, I integrate uh, digital and analog, um, but I focus a lot more analog. And then when I have the time, I take all this or bits. I have one waiting here. This is one of my first bullet, bullet journals. Um, I have workouts in it and then I kind of transfer it to an Excel sheet, but I'm not in a rush to do this. This is from 2019. Yeah, a lot of times what happens is when I get to a weight and then I get better at uh, doing the exercise 
Or sometimes I did an exercise the, the previous day and coming to the new exercise or another exercise on the following day, I'm not as strong, so I even track that. And then I see if there's a pattern. If, I, if my strength, what it used to be, went down for whatever reason, it could also be an impending injury, I'll back off and I'll build back up from that lower weight. With the goal in mind, I still keep the, the previous high weight to see if I'm approaching that. Because sometimes if I'm well rested, and that could be like several weeks later, depending on how the order of everything is, but I'm mentalizing, as you say, I'm really keeping track mentally with that. And even here, I'm into it. It could be that I, I jump back up to the weight that I used to be, then I'll progress it from there. Or it could be that I've gotten better at doing the exercise and it doesn't take that much to stimulate me and so the weights are lower and then I just build up from that. In any rate, whatever way things get, I'm, I'm aware of it. I, whereas I used to be, <coughs> when I wasn't tracking, I'd be like, oh, I'm weaker today, not good. You know, and then I'd be down on myself. That was a long time ago. Also, I would, and I still do get a lot of, um, I won't say injuries, but pains, you know what I mean? And I keep track of that. And sometimes that would make me pull back on the weight, but I wouldn't know where my point of reference was, was for the higher weight. So I'd never reach it again. So I'd be stuck at a lower weight or I'd be, you know, so I, I have to have some sort of frame of reference and that I track in the iPhone notes now. I keep the highest that I had, let's say the highest was in August and we're October now, but I've since done a lighter weight, but that lighter weight is starting to progress back up to the higher weight or not, but it's progressing. I'm aware of that, if that makes sense. I always focus on reps more than I do on the weight when the reps get, I even go up to 30 reps sometimes depending on the exercise before moving. But some days I just don't feel like doing a lot of reps and I'm aware of that and then I'll just jump away. So it could alternate like that too for me as it could bounce back and forth or circuit or whatever names are being used now. I'll, I'll check out um, Bromley's channel because he has a lot of names, blocks, you know what I mean? I'm aware of that and it goes by how I feel also and some days I don't feel like pushing a relatively heavy weight. I'm not going to say heavy weight because I'm not a heavy weight pusher. I have tried it in the past. That's it. I'm focused more on the reps. If I don't feel like doing reps for whatever reason and I feel kind of strong, I'll do the heavier weight and I'll look at what my last effort was. It could be six months before, you know, but I have it tracked on the iPhone notes. I used to go searching through here, but it became too long. And I changed this book every four months. This book lasts me four months, it's $50. And so it's like three per year, uh, four per year. No, three per year, sorry, every four months. Um, so that's $150 for a very good, a book that takes a very good beating for me. Of course you can't. You can't use uh, watercolors or anything for all you artistic bullet journalers, but whatever, it works for me, it takes a beating. The only thing that doesn't take a beating, sometimes the strap comes out, so I just put tape on it, I don't care. It's a little wide now, I just take out the papers and my pens when I'm finished with it and it goes and compresses back down. So this is about 400 pages, as opposed to 100 and something, or 200 maximum for a regular moleskin. Better than a Leuchtturm for me. Sorry, Ryder, I like the moleskin, I like, I like, this big one with the floppy i like the floppy um cover oh when i first started off with this i liked it but it doesn't have enough pages and it's expensive it's not a leuchtturm it's a local uh, or it's a french one what is this uh covetus yeah anyways so double dynamic or dynamic double progression type of programming. Focusing on more repetitions, creeping up with the repetitions each time as best you can. And then when it gets to the upper limit of what you were doing, for me, it can go up and up to 30 repetitions, or sometimes I just, 15, it depends. Then I'll bump it up uh, like five pounds or two and a half pounds on each side or whatever. It's already something I'm doing, so it works for me and it's always worked for me. And it's working even better than I'm tracking things analog. This is a, a journey for me to find out more about programming and to put together programs. And eventually that's what I do for a living anyways. So the more I learn, 
the better I can help other people learn. And I prefer to teach it analog and not app. I know everyone's coming up with apps. We already can't calculate things because we have calculators and we can't remember phone numbers because of cell phones. I'm not for that. Sorry. I do have <laughs> the technology, but I'm not for it. If you like this video, share it, like it, subscribe. This is what I'm going to be doing, programming at the pace I can do it.